This video is sponsored by Zometry. This is my toy car. You know, those ones that you pull back and let go? And so is this. At least I hope it is. I've been working on it for weeks, and even longer than that in my head. You see, I can't find any giant pullback cars on YouTube. Well, other than this thing. But I mean, it can't be that hard, right? I mean, if ThinkFlight can build a giant rubber band plane, certainly elastic technology could be scaled up for a car, right? I mean, I'm not good at math, so I'm not gonna like calculate the forces or anything like that, but I am pretty good at this thing called winging it. So I am gonna build a real pullback car. Even if it gets messy, even if I have to change methods, even if... You know what? Let's just start with the car. So I just saw a post by David on Facebook. He's trying to get ready for this big car event and um, unfortunately his goblin doesn't want to start. Now David is my mechanic buddy, the goblin is his car, and no, he didn't pick the name. The goblin is a kit car, meaning you take the guts out of a real car, throw them in this frame, and boom, you've got a lightweight, sexy speed machine. And while David was trying to work out some bugs, I got a chance to see just how crazy this thing really is. Now there's few feelings that are quite like riding in a fast car, but the feeling that a kid gets when they first play with a pullback car, forget about it. They were so simple, but watching them take a little pull and then fly away was beyond exhilarating. And that's what I'm trying to capture with this project, that feeling of pure childish glee. Except this time, I'm gonna be riding in it. But not everyone was as confident that I could do it. Say that again. 15. 15. Nope. nope, I'm gonna go like five. You really think five miles an hour? Yeah. I think we're gonna hit 25. That's no way. Hard. No way. I gotta hit. No way. Because otherwise, it's not proper road speed. It needs to go 25. I'm gonna find a way to make this go 25. Now, David has plans to pull the engine out of this car for some work. But before I can sneak in my own elastic engine, I need to design an elastic engine, which is a fancy name for a simple concept. All I really need to do is spin this shaft. I just wish it was a bit, you know, longer. Thankfully, we have this old clutch, which has splines that mate with the transmission shaft, as well as a beautiful voice. And by sandwiching this splined core between some pipe flanges and adding a pipe to one end, we've now created a cheap shaft extender. But we still need a body for our engine. So I measured the transmission, then cut some test plates out of cheap fiberboard to make sure that everything lined up properly. But it was in this process of revising the plates that I hit my first major issue. Well, my CNC machine just wants to keep disconnecting for some reason that I don't know. I just re-soldered the USB connector to the control board and I've changed the cable, I've changed the USB connection, I've tried doing a different computer. I don't know what's going on. I just wanna cut stuff. That's why it's really good that today's video is sponsored by Zometry. Zometry cut my actual engine plates out of half inch aluminum and mailed them to me because that's what they do, manufacturing on demand. I mean like, yeah, I could have made them on my machine, but I didn't have to and oh, especially with tapping all of these holes to make sure they're straight. No, forget about it. I'm not set up to tap like that. Even my clunky DXF drawings quickly got me a quote on their streamlined website. They accept a wide array of project files and offer just about any kind of manufacturing service you can think of. I'm super happy with the speed, quality, and accuracy of the work that they did for me, never mind the sheer convenience of the quote and ordering process. So whether you need a quick prototype or even ready to enter high volume production, check out zometry.com slash joelcreates and use coupon code joelcreates to get $50 off your order of $250 or more now through January 31st, 2024. And thanks, Zometry, for sponsoring this video. So this beefy birdcage is our engine. Half-inch pipes pass through one plate and are threaded into the other, and once I had the final measurements done, it was time to start cutting and filling the gaps. Man, I really need a bigger pipe wrench. Good enough. The far end of the drive shaft rides on a smaller pipe flange at the end of the cage, which acts as a friction bearing. Now the idea is to attach rubber bands from the spokes to the center shaft. Yo, how's it going? Oh, you know, just glue in an incredible amount of rubber bands very slowly. That way, when the shaft spins, they will wind around the shaft, storing their stretchy energy. Now the right wheel normally needs a shaft extender in order to connect to the transmission, but fabricating the extra mount would have added more time and complexity, so I just simply locked the right half of the differential using an old CV joint. This will also give us double the output ratio compared to normal, which is a much better fit for our high torque, low RPM rubber bands. <laughs> Now I could go into all the finicky little details, like the pins that hold the end on, or how I glued the bands in an X formation to equalize the tension on the shaft, 
or all the fine adjustments it took to make everything fit. How's it look? Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just too much that went into getting the first test ready. Heck, this whole video will be over in less time than it took me to glue even a fraction of the rubber bands. But little by little, it was coming together. How worried are you that the rubber bands are just gonna snap? Well, here's the thing. Even if they snap, I've limited the danger of catastrophic failure because they'll snap one at a time. Okay, so I wasn't worried, but I wasn't exactly optimistic either. I'm feeling like it's not gonna work that well. I think that it's not gonna go back far enough and it's not gonna get enough speed. The rubber bands are gonna be too restrictive. And yeah, I, I need to see how they perform before I sink a bunch more time into either adding more or changing their configuration. If I pull back. Oh, <laughs> can you feel tension on it? I'm starting to feel more. I mean, oh, look here. at that. What? Look at, oh, one rubber band just snapped. So yeah, even though it was slower than molasses, it was working. Technically successful. And with a little extra push power, we quickly found the upper limit. It started skidding the tires. Oh, look at that, we had a burnout from rubber bands. Okay, so not technically a burnout, but the maxed out rubber bands were enough to overcome the traction on the tire. These rubber bands are just too short, which I kind of knew was going to be a problem, but I didn't really know until you test it because what's in your brain in reality, two different things. And even if I added more rubber bands, all it would do is just break traction sooner. What I need to do is change that um, power curve. We need to extend that by at least like a factor of four. Now, before I undid all of my gluing, I wanted to try and work with the bands by looping some spear gun tubing through them. But due to the different tension levels, this was a no go. Whoa. A literal no-go. <laughs> There's a reason why no one has done this. Okay, quick editor's note. There is a guy named Ron Main who back in like 2008 built a rubber band powered dragster, but I can't find any videos of it. And there's pretty limited information. What I'm doing is more of the pullback street legal version. So I guess technically no one's done this. I think, I don't know. Why don't you leave me a comment if you know of something else? Let's just jump back into it. There's a reason why no one has done this. And I'm starting to understand that reason. And they weren't meant to be powered by rubber bands. Now there was no way I was gonna let David win, but I needed a longer rubber band for a more extended power delivery to hit 25. I needed elastic tubing. First, I cut 50 feet of heavy duty spear gun tubing into 24 inch sections. Then I did the same with about 75 feet of cheaper surgical tubing and began gluing the individual ends to the pipe. This was hand crampingly tedious beyond belief. So I improved the second half of the process by gluing the next section of black tubing to each other before the pipe. The 28 tubes on the bottom half of the pipe were stretched one by one out the back and around the top of the birdcage where they were zip tied in place. Then the 28 tubes on the top half of the pipe were stretched out the front and around the bottom of the birdcage. All right, today is the day. I can feel it. Can you feel it, David? I can feel it. There's just a few more tubules to put together. And once they're put together, my voice is so jacked up. We'll know if this works. And if it does, hopefully it works well because I do not want to rewind this motor again. <laughs> Last one. Look at that. Oh my goodness. You gotta come see this from underneath, Dave. It's quite a trip. I like the different colors. You like that? I like that. That's just because I'm too cheap to afford all the black All the same stuff. colors. The next crucial element in this configuration is the Mick Lube. Seriously, it's an industrial rubber anti-sticking agent that's normally sold in huge quantities to like car factories and stuff. So I emailed them and then Bob reached out to me right away and then he ended up spending almost an hour on the phone with me trying to figure out which product would be the best fit for my application. And then he sent me this sample for free. Go McLube. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'm gonna drop it down and let's see what happens. Now the first small pulls were already more promising than the rubber bands, but still not perfect. The elastic bands were meant to stretch around the bars of the cage, but to do that, they need to slide freely and that wasn't quite happening. It's not sliding as much as I need it to. I gave it another coating of McLoob. Let's just see how it does with that. It was definitely sliding more that time. Unfortunately, the McLoob is not meant to stay wet. It's meant to be mess free for a factory. I need to load these things up with silicone lubricant. All right, we can go. Oh, it's moving a little bit more. And while the now super slippery bands let us wind the car further, I started to hit another bump in the road. Besides the literal bump in the road. Oh, there we go. There's like a hill there. I wonder if it's binding up against the side. 
It was definitely binding up against the sides, particularly this side, and the added friction certainly was not helping things. Shoved into that little groove and that's slowing it down, so I need to somehow put a stopper on the pipe. I don't wanna have to do another modification. I'm just ready for this to work. It's that point in the project, ladies and gentlemen, where I'm just tired. So my brother Charles found a pipe fitting with hose clamps, which we then cut in half to clamp onto each side of the pipe. And we were just about to do our next test when a stranger named John showed up. This thing is not powered by a normal engine. <laughs> Can you guess what it's powered by? No. Do you remember when you were a kid, right? One of the first toys you ever had was a car. What'd you do with that car? You put it on the ground. You pull it back. <laughs> Get the f*** out of here. <laughs> no, That's what a, this is? It's a rubber band engine. Is it going to work, though? Uh, you see that? <laughs> this guy here. This is a rubber band engine. Oh. <laughs> now, it wasn't 25, but the elastic band wrapped birdcage was working, so we pulled it back even further for a second run. Are you ready? Yep. There we go. <laughs> you got a sleeve shot, rubber band car. <laughs> now, on top of the friends that we made along the way, these tests also gave me some valuable insight. So I think the problem is that it's wrapping around, and that's just, it's tying up all the energy between the spokes, so it doesn't release very well. I need to attach one point here with all of them sticking out, and then one over here or something. That's what I think we gotta do, we gotta unwind it. Gotta unwind it from the cage, and because um, we just, yeah, I don't know how fast we got there, not fast enough. So in the quest for more speed and power, I had a plan to simplify the path of the bands. And although it was ugly, it eliminated the friction of the wrapped cage configuration. What do we start with? Start with well, this, work our way down? Third, I would, I would do, and we'll just try to put it in third and see what happens. All right, third, you gotta really give it a running start. You ready? Yep. Set, go! Let her go. Look at that. It's all right, it's all right if it starts winding. Okay. Yeah, I don't care too much. That was pretty good. Oh, was it good. was pretty good. So we switched from third to fifth gear, got a good running start, and then this happened. <laughs> go. Just lost like most of the black ones. It's moving, it's going further. That was the best you've seen so far. According to my cheap GPS speedometer, it was only four miles an hour, but I mean, it looked pretty good, and then all the bands started snapping. I think that if I can get the bands really secure, we find the right gear, we get enough of a run, this might actually reach semi-impressive looking speed. So it turns out that the silicone lubricant had gotten where the bands were zip-tied, allowing them to slip out. So I cleaned them up with alcohol, and then double zip-tied all the black ones. It's been a lot of work just to get a little, a little, a little bit of progress. Now at this point, I had started to accept that maybe 25 wasn't gonna happen with elastic bands. But for this test, I'd still be happy with like 20 or 15 or heck, even 10. And even though my setup was pretty safe, I could feel the tension building just behind me. Stop. All right, I got brakes on, I got brakes on. All right, hold on. Here we go. But for all that buildup, I didn't feel much release. Nothing! All right, fifth gear is not the way. I think I'm gonna do second gear. And with the car in second gear instead of fifth, it didn't take long to lock up that tire. But it did take us a while to notice that we had locked up the tire. Did it slip in the tire? Yeah, the tire's slipping. Tire's locked, tire's locked, that's it. Right there. Ready? Here we go. In second gear, the car had much quicker acceleration, but it ran out of juice super quickly. Three kilometers an hour. You hit that shit perfect that time. Thank you. Now in this moment, I was feeling a bit, um, I don't know, disillusioned with the idea. And a smarter man would probably have just called it quits. Well, I guess we gotta keep improving. I'm not a smarter man. It took so long, it's so tedious, but I don't think we can go any further with rubber bands or elastic bands. Now maybe it was the effect of a sunk cost fallacy, or, or maybe it was because David had predicted this result all along and I just didn't want to let him have that, but I needed a much longer lasting and stronger power delivery if I was gonna get anywhere near 25, and I was in luck. You see, my buddy Aaron is a one-man garage door business. Yeah. And that's all we do, don't ask if I do anything else. And you know, I don't think he's lying. You see, this was something new, a road that has basically never been traveled, but he brute forced his way through this installation 
like it was just another day at the office. Like it was just another garage door spring. It's been like an hour and 45 minutes and it's done. Now torsion springs get smaller inside as they tighten and this one unfortunately bottomed out on the shaft before it could store enough energy. It's locked up on the tube. We have to go bigger spring. And with a bigger spring in, now surely this would be the test. This would be the one that would finally. Oh, oh. oh no, I broke. <laughs> That's going to be some good footage. Good footage and more work for Aaron, who again took it all out, redid it, and put it back. You know, it's incredible the amount of help that I get from incredible people like Aaron, not to mention David, who puts up with my crazy experiments. I can't thank them enough, so please do it for me in the comments because without their suffering, I never would have been able to suffer this much either. No, but seriously though, please say thank you. I need their help for future projects. This bigger spring had me excited, and the first quick test with helpful neighbor John wasn't too shabby. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, we just barely got to six kilometers an hour. That looked pretty good, right? Very impressed. I'm definitely interested to see what happens when you push it further back. All right, I think at this point we need to get the forklift going. Do you think it's gonna explode? -y? Maybe. It was 22 feet yesterday was what did it. That was it? That end got worked really hard and then we didn't let it cool fully and we didn't lubricate the spring. We were just kind of not thinking because it was so hard to get the spring through the bolt. With those problems addressed and David on forklift, we were ready to really push it or pull it, sure. you know. Feel the spring getting tighter. We're locked up. We're locked up. The tire's locked up. Brakes on. Ready, here we go. And we're moving, we're moving. What's our speed? Three, five, five and a, I think we got five and a half. Now we're coasting. Okay. I want to get across the parking lot, but we're only getting not, not really that far. All right, I think, yeah, we got to do a new gear now. All right, there's four. Oh man, every time it does this, I can like feel the tension. Literally. That rear wheel, the rear wheel's locked. Brakes on. One, two, three, four, five. Barely got to five. Now at the time, I thought we were maxing out because the rear tire just couldn't handle any more torque, but it was actually breaking traction because once again, even this bigger spring was winding down in diameter to the point of locking onto the drive shaft, limiting how much power we could store in it. Should I just do second maybe? Which meant no matter what gear we put it in, we just couldn't get any more speed. Now, maybe I should have just accepted my modicum of success and abandoned my dreams of more speed. I mean, this is literally a giant pullback toy car and I can even ride in it. Three miles an hour and about 30 feet. And hey, that's faster than the average walking speed. Is it? Yeah, the average. Yeah! <laughs> but once I actually reviewed this footage and realized that an even bigger spring just might be able to do more, I found an even bigger spring and I tried to do more. It was a lot of work because I had to fix my CNC machine so that it could modify the birdcage so that the spring could actually fit inside the birdcage. And then Aaron had to help some more, but you know what? I'm just gonna skip to the test. This is it. This is the last one. Either it works or it doesn't. I just want it to feel like it did when you were a kid. I don't know what speed that is. I don't know where the cutoff is. Um, I just want to feel it. Here we go. <laughs> it sounds steampunk. Okay, so the big spring did not want to play ball and it wound up so stupidly, even when I tried to guide it a bit. Now I know that there's more that could be done, but I can't do any more right now. And to be honest, I'm not sure that I really felt the magic but I do tend to be pretty hard on myself. So I do hope that you at least felt a little. A huge thank you to David, Aaron, Quincy, John, other John Charles, and everyone else who made this video possible. And of course, thank you Zometry for sponsoring. Check out Zometry.com slash Joel Creates for your parts. I'll see you next time. Huzzah, we did it! <laughs>
Ha 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 ha!